All right. Now in the previous lecture, we have solved weeks in years challenge and we have printed out the final result like this. Now here you can see that to print out a simple message to the console, we have done a lot of operations like concatenation and typecasting. Now this is quite painful and understandably, a lot of programmers will need some slightly more convenient way of incorporating things that we have different data types. So let's say we have different data types like integer, float, and boolean. And we want to mix all of them into a sentence that's a string and get printed out to the console. So to convert all these data types and print them out is really, really painful. So instead of doing all these conversions and concatenations over here, we can use fstring. So fstring allows us to combine all different data types together without converting and concatenating them. All we have to do is in front of string, we just need to type f. So in this case, in our project over here, I'm just going to comment this part, which is inside print by using the concatenation and conversion. So here, I'm just going to put this line after f string over here. So I'm going to write this message in f string. So in this case, all we have to do is we have to put f in front of string. And it's really important that it goes in front of the double quotes or single quotes over here. Then I'm just going to delete these conversions from here. So in this case, it's going to be like this. So we are going to delete these concatenations over here. So it's going to be like this. So after deletion, you see that we have deleted all concatenation, but our variables that we have over here, year and week stays as string over here. So we have to do something over here to differentiate these weeks from these weeks over here, because mm -hmm. in this case, if I just print out the result is going to print out there are weeks, weeks in year, years. So in this case, we have to take the values from these variables over here. So in case of F string, we are putting these variables inside a set of curly braces. So it's going to be like this. So these weeks is the weeks that comes from this variable. So I'm going to put these weeks inside curly braces. And this year also comes from this variable. So in this case, I'm going to put it over here inside curly braces. So as you can see, without any conversion over here, we are just putting the F in front of string over here before the double quotation or single quotation. And we are putting the variables inside curl braces over here. Now, in this case, if I run our code, you will see that it's working the way that it worked before. So we need to enter the number of years. So I'm just going to put two over here. And if I enter two, it's going to print out the message that we printed out before. So there are 104 weeks in two years over here. So as you can see, instead of writing these concatenations and conversion over here, by using F string, we can just combine all different data types together without any conversion or concatenation. All we have to do, we have to write F in front of the string over here, and then we have to write the variables inside curly braces over here. So as you can see, by using F string, you cut down a lot of manual labor of inserting different data types into a string. And this is going to be really handy in the future when you become a professional Python developer. Now, another important thing that I want to mention in this lecture is round function in Python. So I'm just going to put over here round. So when we were talking about operators and expressions, we have mentioned that whenever we divide a number by another number, we always get floating number. It doesn't matter if this number is integer or floats, but the result from the division will be float number. So in this case, for example, if I divide 10 by 3, you will see that in this case, we are getting 3.333. At the end, we have 5 over here. So as you can see, even though these numbers over here are integer, we are getting floating number. Now, of course, it's possible to get integer by floor division or we can convert the result to the integer. So if I put floor division, for example, over here, it's going to return the integer. So in this case, it's going to return three. So other way of doing this, we can convert this result into integer by using in function over here. So if I use the in function, it's going to print out three one more time over here because this is integer. But here, when we use floor division or converting to the integer, we see that all it does is it just chops off everything after the decimal point instead of what we would traditionally do, which is to round the number. So we know from math that if the number is 3.5, in this case, it's going to go to the 4. If the number is less than 3.5, in this case, it's going to go to 3 if we round it by using mathematical operation over here. 
Now in Python, it's super easy to round the number. All we have to do is we just need to use round function like this. So when we are dividing, for example, 10 by 3, in this case, I'm just going to put round function over here. So it's going to round it without any conversion over here. So if I run it, you'll see that in this case also it's returning 3. Because if I just put it over here without rounding, you'll see that when we divide 10 by 3, it is 3.333. So this means that it's less than 3.5. So that's why it's going to go to the 3 over here when we are rounding it. Now here you need to take into account that when we are rounding number, in this case, it's returning an integer. So we have whole number over here. But if you wanted, you can actually go a step further. You can actually specify the number of digits of precision you wanted to round it. Now here, if you round it without any precision, you are just going to get the whole number. But if you round it using, for example, precision over here like this, so you just, you just need to provide comma then the precision. So in this case, for example, if I want to put two decimal places over here, I'm just going to provide two. So if I run our code, you will see that in this case, it's printing out 3.33 over here. So in this case, it's rounded it only to decimal place. Now, instead of, for example, division over here, if I put something like this, so I'm just going to delete this part from here. So instead of, for example, division, if I put something like this, 3.3334445555, something like this, and run our function, you'll see that in this case also it's printing out 3.33 over here. So we are rounding it into two decimal place. So if I put three over here, for example, it's going to round it into three decimal place. So as you can see, it's rounding it to three decimal place. But instead of, for example, 3.33 over here, if I put 3.56789, so in this case, you see that it's going to round it to the three decimal place over here. Now, if I just delete this three precision from here and run it, in this case, it's going to round it to four because it's greater than 3.5 over here. So by using round function, we can round our numbers. So we can put precision over here or we can just leave it as round over here. So if we have not provide any precision, it's just going to round it to whole number, an integer number. Otherwise, it's going to put decimal places after those over here, whatever we provide as, as precision over here. Now with this, we have come to the end of this lecture. So in this lecture, we have discussed how can we use F string and how can we round numbers in Python. So hopefully everything is clear about f string and rounding so see you in the next lecture